Today we're going to be shooting in the infrared mode using the Canon XF100. I'm going to be running the camera through a series of tests to judge whether or not this is a good idea for my thesis. It's a special ops POV. They go into a dark room, they got to use night vision, right? So we're going to run a few tests using natural lighting, daylight, no light, and low light. So enjoy it. So this is the camera in its native setting. I do have auto gain on, so it is pretty high right now. It's actually at a nine right now, but I'm gonna do a quick pan around the room so you can see what I'm working with as far as natural lighting. Right now I got the camera on sticks. I will be taking it off sticks, walking around. But again, just right now, I want you to see the environment I'm working in, in its native state. So we're back on the sticks again. I'm just going to walk down and walk back just so you, I can see how the lighting affects flesh tones. This is a green. The uh, military desert camo is the digital camo now, so it's a lot lighter than this. But, you know, infrared is still cool. So there's my quick, dirty person in the frame, skin tone, all that good jazz, contrast, can I track this? Uh, there's a couple things I need to take into consideration. Another reason why I'm doing this is I want to make sure the infrared can give me enough contrast so that I can do match moving and later composite my CG creatures into the shot. Now obviously this is an undressed location. I don't know how, how much dressing I will have money to do, but we will attempt to make it look spooky. So I'm going to go ahead and shut off this light, and I'll run back in here, get the camera set up again, do a quick pan. Uh, well, it's going to be 100% light leaking coming in from the daylight. I'm really more interested in what's going on right here with the, the roof, because the roof has these nice little wonderful pools of light that can be shining down. Maybe I can add some smoke, a little mystery. We'll see. But again, this is all just a test, so uh, yeah, enjoy. Here we go. So, much spookier. The uh, auto gain is still going up to 21. It has an f-stop of 1.8. Uh, you can see the effect of those uh, lights uh, on the ceiling a lot better than how they form the pools on the ground and whether you like it or not that adds to the scene 
So there you go, I was once standing by that tank. There's the tools. And this is all from daylight leaking in from one direction and directly above. Not bad, but maybe not necessarily what I want. Although I have no problems forcing a grip to go on top of the roof to shine light down there. Doing this kind of quick here. Because, you know, when I have the troop guys in here, they're not going to be moving too slow. Oh, and that AC is just wonderful. So, it's those wonderful tanks in that pool of light. I look up. Uh, maybe the cat will jump from there, scan back that way. You can see how the light leaking from the uh, rolling shutters really affects the image. And even in the LCD I can see a lot of grain. But still, in the mid-ground, still looking pretty sharp. So you can see what it looks like in natural lighting. We Still got some light spill from the ceiling and from the doors, but this gives you a general comparison in the daylight time using natural lighting, using the infrared beam that's provided, what the camera's doing, the grain, and how generally nasty it looks, um, and whether or not it can provide me with enough contrast to be able to track this room. I'm going to do a walk back and forth just so I can see what I look like with the infrared beam rocking to and fro so I can check flesh tones and different colors and see how that's going to affect my image. So bear with me. The light in the dark here. Okay, so now we have the infrared beam covered with gaffer's tape. Uh, big drastic difference when it comes to things in front of the lens. Uh, for my specific purposes, I probably do want the infrared beam just because that would seem more practical and legit. For cinematography purposes, on the other hand, you might want to block it because you get a nice image. Uh, so, or well, as nice as you can get. Um, so yeah, let's do a walkthrough now that we don't have the infrared on and uh, see what it does and then I'll do a walk back and forth just to, again, check skin tones and color values. So you can see how well it does section off the light and how quick it falls off, uh, especially without that infrared beam blasting. You can tell by the, the uh, areas in between the shelves here tend to drop off much quicker, which for me is a much nicer effect. Um, the downside to that is, is I also don't seemingly get as nice of a hit off the tanks as far as their highlights go, but that is something we can fix with location lighting. Once again, that wonderful little pool of light just lighting up all those tanks right there. And again, you can see how this works well with just a little bit of light peeling through.